businesses that you know could use a bump in the financial piece of their practice. It gives new clinical data, which will lead to better patient outcomes. And as you all know, that's extremely important to doctors for a couple of different reasons. Not only are they being, being a better practitioner of medicine, um, but it also helps them with um, increased revenues from reimbursement. But it's giving new clinical data that help their patients get healthier quicker. It's completely up, zero cost up front. We give them a, everything is provided by us. We give the practice a, a 60 to $65,000 um, device to perform the testing on. We give them an MA who is trained, fully salary, full benefits. That is on our budget, okay? We give everything, basically what I say all the time is we give them all the tools to perform this testing all the way down to the Clorox wipes we use to clean off the blood pressure cuffs. It's a combination of three tests, ankle brachial index, autonomic nervous system, and pseudomotor, okay? Those tests, and I'll explain them real briefly in case you guys are not aware, um, the ABI is performed using blood pressure cuffs placed on different parts of their body. And the idea is if the blood pressure in your left arm and your right leg is significantly different, different, there is a blockage or something impeding blood flow between those areas. Same thing vice versa with the other side of your body. The autonomic nervous system testing puts your cardiovascular system under duress. So, and when we talk about it, it's your parasympathetic nervous system that we're stimulating. And we do that through a, a variety of breathing exercises, the valsalva movement, standing up and sitting down. I, what it's doing is getting a better picture of what everyday life is as opposed to an EKG. So the majority of us just don't lay down all day long. So we're seeing the cardiovascular vast, like you, like you would do an EKG. The cardiovascular system is being put under duress. So in our test, so that you can see what it looks like when you get cut off in traffic or you're angry or you go for a walk or walk upstairs or carry your groceries, okay? And then pseudomotor is, pseudomotor is simply a, um, a fancy word for sweat. It's sweat testing. So we have two glass plates. The patient takes off their um, shoes and socks, puts their hands and feet on these two glass plates that are proprietary. We put them on and evaluates the amount of acetylcholine in your sweat and, but also, um, it also evaluates how long it takes for the sweat to develop. That is important because then we can drill. That's how we're drilling down into the nerve endings and your fingers and toes, which would be a indication of microvascular issues. The idea is you can't have macrovascular issues, which are, you know, as you guys all know, um, heart attack, stroke, things like that without microvascular issues. So we take all of the data from these three tests. We run them through our algorithm, which is proprietary. Our software is proprietary to our CMO who developed this. And we use a, we compare that data to um, norms and to this proprietary um, historical database of patients. And we can do a really good job, about 88% accurate, of predicting where a patient's um, health arc is. So what we're, the idea is we're evaluating patients before they have manifested some issues. So they are asymptomatic and we are trying to determine if they are a candidate for certain disease types. Okay. And an added benefit is it's serial, which means we can perform this test up to four times per year. Here's a good picture of the device. Um, it's a, um, it's, it's serial, so it can be performed up to four times per year. <clears throat> So the idea is the doctor can get a baseline reading, get find out what's going on with the patient, and then do whatever therapies, whatever it may be, counseling on nutrition or smoking or and giving a prescription, doing a, a number of different things, and bring them back and test them again in three months. The important thing for you guys to know is this can be done up to four times per year per patient. Okay approved by CMS and Medicare to be paid for that many times. Our test is completely reimbursed by Medicare, Medicaid, and all the major payers. Okay, another important thing for people in, in your particular line of work. And it, it creates about $150 to $170 on a national average 
of new revenue for the practice. Okay, so this is a great way for you to take your doctors that may be um, averaging a hundred, you know, primary care internal med docs that are averaging a hundred, a hundred ten dollar visits, and boost that up to about a, a four hundred dollar visit. The typical reimbursement that we see nationwide is somewhere in the range of 350. And of course that changes a little bit. That's a Medicare allowable. Um, you know, rural Mississippi is much different than LA and New York City, okay, in terms of the reimbursement. But if that, and that is testing revenue only. So if you think about it, the doctor is going to find some patients that have not manifested any symptoms yet. He will find them and he'll be able to put them in, in a, because of this, he can bring them in more often. So it definitely has a downstream revenue effect also. So we're getting these doctors that may not be as busy. We're getting their schedules a little bit more busy by referring patients that we found disease types, disease states that have not typically been diagnosed yet. Okay. Once again, if you live in the, the world, if you think about it's new patient data that's leading to, to improve patient outcomes, and it's new monies. It's it's typical. It's not data that they have been, are receiving currently. So therefore, it's a five CPT code, five CPT codes that they're not billing for the most part right now. ABI, ANS, and Pseudomotor are three of those. Okay. So you're taking a, a typical hundred dollar visit and making it a four hundred fifty dollar visit. Okay. I threw a lot in there. Does anybody have any questions? We can go, we'll go into some more things, but I just want to make sure you guys have that clear. Nobody? Okay. Okay. So the, the particular business proposition that we have for you is this is a great way for you to get your contra contracted rate in terms of billing on the front end for, from the provider that you're doing the billing for, the collections that you're doing. Like I said, this is approved by CMS, FDA. Um, every major payer we run into is definitely paying, especially the, the government entities. Okay, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Aetna, Humana, no matter who it is, is paying. Because this is a preventative measure, and this goes along with a lot of their new initiatives, with keeping patients healthier longer and trying to avoid that um, costly hospital stay for patients as they get sick. Okay. And then on the back end, we pay a commission for any potential references, referrals that you may make to make for us. The idea is Anthony and I would like to build partnerships with you and not to put any more um, additional stress on you or your, your teams, but we'll, if you would do the warm intros for us, we'd be happy to do the sales effort and follow up and get these deals closed for you and make you look like a hero because you're helping these, these providers to increase their bottom line. You're helping their patients and you're making them more successful as business people. Any other, any questions on that? So I'll just add, I mean, obviously Brian's far more fluent in this than I am, but they're in the business yeah. of saving lives. And there's stories of this um, device, of this service, saving people from an impending heart attack. Um, so catching something 10 years in advance is, is uh, revolutionary. It's huge. It's something that's not existing out there as far as I, as I know. <laughs> so pretty big. Yeah. Deal. I mean, if, you know, there are those stories that, you know, people have, but more importantly, we're changing the quality of life for patients by, by finding these disease states way before they would typically been, have been um, detected and allowing the doctor to start to treat earlier in the process. So, before they develop, you know, peripheral artery disease or, you know, diabetic neuropathy or have, you know, a major cardiac event, we can perform preventative measures to make sure that those things don't happen. Questions? Okay, Brian, this is Bala Balaji here. So you mean to say that, uh, you mean to say that uh, this uh, device will help the providers doctors to uh, diagnosis the, the diseases like before, like we are in prior to, like let's say like uh, as uh, Anthony said before, like 10 years, they can identify uh, the patient symptoms like or the patient condition. Uh, it also helps the provider to uh, get paid 
for the services which is not been paid earlier, right? That's what you're trying to say, right? Correct. I think I, it broke up a little bit there, but yes, it's going to help the doctor find patients, disease states earlier, and it's reimbursed by insurance. So we're giving the doctor more data. He can treat his patients more effectively. We get better patient outcomes, and we know what that does for a doctor, um, how it opens up some more additional monies for them. And it's completely, it's completely turnkey. We'll take any of the, there's no burden whatsoever placed on the practice. We provide a lot of support, uh, both workflow support, provider support. The test is done real time. So we can give them an 800 number to call in and discuss a patient and the data from the patient if it's unclear to them at any time. Then on the back, back, on the back end, we will help you as this becomes new to, to you, we'll give you a billing liaison to make sure that the reimbursements are being performed to their maximum. Thank you, Dodge. And this, uh, this helps a lot of people as well. It helps the providers. Uh, let's, uh, let me take it to a few of my providers and let's see, like, and what type of services, uh, in, you know, this can be installed in all the practices, like, or like a certain, is there any specialty or certain specialty only that can be worked on or I'm sorry, you broke up. What did Anthony, what was the question? Yeah, he's asking, is there a specific specialty that this actually works best for? Is it generally for every practice? Um, the, only, not the only thing that we don't have a clinical indication for is for pediatrics and ENT. And of course, um, and of course, um, like behavioral health. The Our sweet spot is really internal med primary care. They love this. This is where we're having a ton of um, a ton of success. But it has a clinical indication for any type of surgery because of the ABI component. You want to make sure that the patient's blood flow is solid. So before they undergo any type of anesthesia, um, endocrinology, nephrology, orthopedics is huge in um, podiatry, pain management. You know, pretty much anything that has to do uh, women's health is becoming a really big market for us because a lot of um, a lot of women use their gynecologist as the primary care provider. It is as as indications for everything, but I mean behavioral health, ENT, and um, pediatrics. Okay, all right. So, Great question. That, no, actually, I'm just thinking like uh, uh, I will discuss with and uh, okay, uh, Brian. I have a the major question. Is this a uh, device uh, uh, which for only US or it can be shipped out of the US? No, it, cannot, it can't be shipped out of the U.S. The only place that we, the FDA is clear is the practices in uh, continental United States and our um, related uh, properties. Okay, well, the, okay, all right. No I never, problem. I never asked that question. Good question. Never considered that. <laughs> all right. So it, sometimes, like, uh, this this is an advanced uh, equipment which will be helpful across the globe, right? Uh, so it can be helpful to all the... It is really a nice device, which, uh, which is useful for all the... So, Balaji, to answer your question, um, let me present real quick a slide here that shows you the intake form. So, it is it is basically for everybody because everybody fits basically the same profile. It's 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 very broad. So, if you look at these questions that you actually ask that actually um, demonstrates medical necessity, you go through 1 through 11 with me real quick, and I mean, it's come pretty fairly obvious to you pretty quick. Do you have diabetes? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have high cholesterol, sleep apnea, um, if applicable, erectile dysfunction? Do you have chronic kidney disease? Do you have heart disease? Do you have a history of smoking? Uh, let's see, numbness in your fingers. Have you had uh, numbness in your toes, your feet? Uh, for instance, here, uh, pain in your legs uh, when you walk. But this is the big one right here. Have you ever been exposed to COVID-19? Have you had it or been even been exposed to it? I don't know anybody who hasn't been exposed to it. So, so to answer your question, it's for everybody. We, what we say, um, Balaji, um, about 60% of, on a national average, of a typical internal, internal medicine, medical practice will qualify for the test. It's important that intake form, Anthony said, it's great that you pulled it in. That's important because that gives the doctor medical necessity to run the test. And you know what that means. It means it's a, it validates that the patient is a, is a good one for the doctor, but also opens the gateway to billing. Exactly, that's right. Even this report can be used as a medical necessity and it can be in one single form or one document you can just 
get it paid easily. Yeah. Probably Correct. So. Yeah, we, we have no problems whatsoever with um, with reimbursements. But just so you know that the we will give what we see quite often when we start this is because there are new codes for the doctor. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of reticence, and we provide the MA will provide medical records for um, the practice to make sure that the billing is, is complete and is adjudicated correctly. That's basically it in a nutshell, guys. And I wanted to host maybe once a week an, if, for those who are interested, uh, future meetings um, so to, to share more about this. Um, but I know you guys are all busy at work. Um, I know Vignesh uh, only had a short amount of time. Um, Manish, obviously, he had to leave. He popped in and out. I don't know if anyone noticed. <laughs> but um, if you guys have any uh, other questions, please uh, uh, shoot them now or just send me after um, this meeting and I'll be happy to answer them. Or I have Brian um, answer them for you. Yeah, sure. At the moment, like uh, I don't have any questions happening. Like, but I'll be, uh, I'll drop you an email. Yeah. Telling if I have any questions or any clarifications, I'll drop you an email. Absolutely. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to record this because I'm not sure why. Um, I guess the reason is I the consent on somebody's end wasn't um, uh, consented. So that's no big deal. Um, I'm going to actually transcript this out or we'll just have a second and I'll send that out to you guys. But I'll also have a second meeting pretty much um, as, you know, saying everything we're saying today. Just uh, repeating it again, making sure everyone understands we're all on the same page. Everything good? Anyone, any right. any questions for Brian while he's here? Thank you so much. But I didn't even introduce him properly to those who showed up late. By, real quick, Brian's the vice president of development uh, for um, Top Doctor DX, so he would be actually the person to um, to you would be making your referral sources of uh, your um, to in the future should you be interested in. So yes, Brian, uh, this is Balaji, David, Sonia, Vignesh, and uh, yeah, thanks, Brian, for speaking today. Thank you, guys. Everyone have a great weekend. All right, Bye. take care, man. Thank you. All right. He left. Who's here still? <laughs> hey, I just wanted to say thanks for making the meeting. What would you guys think?